Tormex wet sharpening systems like this T4 sharpener and new diamond stones have been making it easier for woodworkers to keep their hand tools sharp for decades. Here are three practical examples where having razor sharp edges will make all a difference. One of the tried and true methods for making mortises is to drill out most of the waste, then chisel away the rest to make the mortises walls flat and the ends square. In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete the hand tool process to go from here to here. Now, there's nothing really tricky about drilling out a mortise, but before you head to the drill press, take some time to first lay out your mortise carefully with a fine lead pencil so it looks like this. Here I've marked the ends of my mortise the side walls of my mortise, and the center line. And here's an important tip at this layout stage. The chiseling process will be a lot easier if you go over your pencil lines now with a marking gauge and a sharp knife to score these four mortise wall layout lines. You'll see why this is so helpful when we get to the chiseling stage. Now line up a brad point or Forstner bit with the mortise's center line and drill out the waste in a series of side-by-side -side passes from one end of the mortise to the other. And now we're ready to chisel the mortise. And the best way to do that is with two different styles of chisels. You'll need a wide bench chisel like this for cleaning up these long side walls. And I like to use a mortising chisel like this to square up the ends. If you're not familiar with mortising chisels, here's why they're helpful. Mortising chisels have much thicker blades than standard bench chisels. So both the blade and the cutting edge can stand up to a lot of pounding with a mallet. And the thickness of this blade, as well as its perfectly square back corners, also help it register and follow the mortise all the way down to the bottom. Mortising chisels are made in a range of widths typically from an eighth inch to a half inch, so you can match the width of the chisel blade to the width of the mortise you're making. For both mortising and bench chisels, of course, it's important that their cutting edges are sharp, because a sharp edge will sever the wood fibers more cleanly, and it'll take a lot less effort to drive the chisels down into the mortise. And to sharpen mine, I'm using a Tormek T4 sharpener equipped with Tormek's coarse and fine diamond wheels. The helpful aspect of these diamond wheels is that you can sharpen the flat top bevel of mortising and bench chisels on the side of the wheel using the company's MB100 multi-base attachment. Side grinding like this isn't safe to do with ordinary aluminum oxide grinding wheels on a high speed grinder because the wheel can shatter. But on these wheels, the diamonds are anchored with nickel to a steel core that runs perfectly true. There's no danger of fracturing or shattering the wheel. And Tormex slow speed wet sharpening action keeps the tool steel cool, so there's no risk of the cutting edge losing its temper. Now that my chisels are sharp, I can go to work cleaning up this mortise. And I'm going to start by squaring up the ends with my mortising chisel. And here's why scoring those mortise layout lines with a marking gauge and a knife really comes in handy. I can register the back of my mortising chisel right in this knife line here. I don't have to do this by eye because you can feel when the edge drops into place. Now hold the mortising chisel square to the face of the workpiece and drive it into the wood with four or five strong mallet blows. Then lever the chisel forward into the mortise so it can break away the waste on the side walls to create the start of a square corner. Square up the other end of the mortise the same way. Now, switch to a wide bench chisel to pare away the waste on the long side walls of the mortise. Again, those knife lines give your chisel's edge a helpful starting point. If you've drilled away most of the waste already, you might be able to remove this waste with hand pressure on the chisel only, rocking the blade from side to side while pushing straight downward. Clean away the waste down to where the mortising chisel stopped. Now clear out the debris from the first round so you can repeat the chiseling process. Drive the mortising chisel down deeper into the ends on round two, then clean and smooth the side walls as well with the bench chisel. Two or three rounds of this chiseling will get you down to the bottom on all but the deepest mortises. Now check the ends of the mortise with a small square to make sure they aren't sloping inward at the bottom. 
clean out any additional waste that might be down inside until the square sits flush against the mortise ends on the surface. When you're done, you'll have a nice clean mortise with flat sidewalls and square ends. Cleaning up drilled mortises is easy with a couple of sharp tools and a little know-how. As we've just seen, sharp mortising chisels will make it easier to square up drilled mortises. But here's another scenario where sharp bench chisels will help you get the job done right. When making picture frames, it's fairly common practice to glue the frame together, then use a rabbiting bit to round out the inside back edges for the glass, the art printer photo, and the backer piece. But that leaves you with these rounded corners that need to get squared up. How do you do that? Well, it's a chiseling technique, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process. The first step in removing these rounded corners left by the router bit is to mark them so you'll know just how much material you need to remove. Using a combination square, draw two layout lines that connect adjacent edges of the router cut together to form square corners. Now to remove these waste areas, you're going to need a bench chisel that's wider than these curves. I'm going to be using a one inch wide bench chisel here, and it has to be sharp to cut the wood fibers cleanly. But a sharp chisel is also a safer chisel to use because you won't have to apply as much force to cut with it, and less force means fewer chances for accidents. To sharpen my bench chisel, I'm using a Tormek T4 sharpener equipped with Tormex coarse and fine diamond wheels. These diamond wheels enable you to sharpen the flat top bevel of bench chisels on the side of the wheel using the company's MB100 multi-base attachment. Side grinding like this isn't safe to do with ordinary aluminum oxide grinding wheels on a high-speed grinder because the wheel can shatter. But on these wheels, the diamonds are anchored with nickel to a steel core that runs perfectly true. There's no danger of fracturing or shattering the wheel. And Tormex slow speed wet sharpening action keeps the tool steel cool, so there's no risk of the cutting edge losing its temper. Now that my chisel's razor sharp, I can get to work cleaning up these corners. And here's what you do first. Set the flat back of your chisel into the corner like this. So part of it is resting against the flat router cut here, and the rest of it can extend all the way over into the corner. Now, push down and roll the chisel like this. What you're doing is scoring this layout line so you know where the blade needs to be registered. Do the same thing to the adjacent layout line. Now set the chisel back into one of these score lines and give it two or three good wraps with a mallet. Then switch to the other score line and deepen that one too. But don't go too deep at this stage. If you keep pounding, you can actually start to drive the chisel in the wrong direction. All we want to do is establish the start of a square corner and work straight down. Carefully chisel away this first shallow layer of waste from the corner. Use paring cuts and hand pressure only, being careful to remove only the material down to the depth of your score lines. This gives us a bit of a backstop for the chisel and starts the squaring process down into the corner. Now hammer the chisel deeper into the wood, this time along both score lines. Aim to remove about an eighth of an inch of material on this go around, chiseling away the waste the same way you did initially. Depending on how deep you route the recess in your frame, it'll usually take three or four rounds of this chiseling process to get all the way down to the bottom of the routed area. And when you get to the bottom, flip the chisel over so its beveled face is down to pare away the last of the waste. This way, it won't cut any deeper, but will just help to flatten the bottom so it looks like this. Now, chisel the other three corners the same way. Squaring up corners is a bread and butter chiseling technique you'll use again and again. For frame applications like this, on hinge mortises, stop dados or grooves, and more. With a little practice, this will be simple, but there's no denying that the sharper the chisel, the easier the process will be. A Tormex sharpener equipped with a diamond wheel can even sharpen carbide. Here's a wood turning example that just might surprise you. Carbide insert turning tools like this are making wood turning easier for both novices and experienced turners. But they do have one drawback. 
Once the edges of the insert dulls, you have to replace it, unless you have a way to sharpen it. Well, Tormac has a convenient solution, and in this video, I'm going to show you how it works. There are a couple of challenges to sharpening these tiny carbide inserts. For one, carbide is super hard, and that's why it holds an edge for so long. But you can't sharpen it with ordinary stones or grinding wheels. It takes diamonds to do this job. So I'm going to use Tormac's T4 sharpener equipped with this extra fine 1200 grit diamond wheel. The other challenge is these carbide inserts are pretty small. You have to have a means for holding them during sharpening as well as a way to maintain these beveled edges right here. But that'll be easy to do using Tormex SVD 186R gouge jig mounted on the sharpener's universal support. And Tormex sharpening system will work on a variety of carbide insert tool brands and cutter shapes, including round, square, and diamond. What's important, regardless of brand, is that the whole size of the cutter is either 4, 5, 6, or 8 millimeter. That'll enable it to fit onto this M4 screw or onto one of these two shoulders on the gouge jig here. And here's how Tormex gouge jig is helpful for this sharpening operation. Turning this knob back here enables the jig's shaft to spin all the way around. And this knob down here locks the shaft in place wherever you need it to be. So let's go ahead and put a fresh edge on this round insert here. Here I'm mounting the insert onto the gouge jig's shaft so its beveled edge is facing outward. Then, to make the sharpening process easier to see, I'll color the beveled edge with a black marker. Now I can install the gouge jig on the T4's universal support and make one final adjustment. I need to adjust the support in or out until the carbide insert's beveled edge is flat against the diamond wheel, like this. And now with the gouge jig's shaft unlocked so it'll swivel, I can go ahead and touch up this cutter's bevel. To do that, all I have to do is start the sharpener and swivel the jig into place so the insert is resting lightly against the diamond wheel. Then, I slowly rotate the insert until all the marker is abraded away. The jig holds the insert evenly at the bevel angle, so the sharpening process goes quickly and remains consistent. Once the marker is gone, the bevel's all done. And as a second step, I can rub the top flat face of the insert against the side of the diamond wheel. Doing that completes the sharpening process. Now I mentioned that this same jig will sharpen square or diamond shaped cutters too. Here's how that process works. Just rotate the gouge jig's shaft until a flat face of the cutter is resting on the diamond wheel. Then tighten the knob to lock the shaft in place and start sharpening. Repeat this process for each flat face. And that's all it takes to sharpen your carbide inserts so you can get back to wood turning again. To learn more about Tormex T4 sharpener, diamond wheels, and gouge jig, as well as Tormex full line of sharpening products, visit Tormec.com, Rockler.com, or a Rockler store near you. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine and Rockler, and thanks for watching.